Hello and welcome to another Worldwide Camera Exchange Buyer's Guide. Today we're going to look at the Hasselblad 500 series cameras. Now, Hasselblad, as everybody knows, has a fantastic reputation. They're extremely well made, they're extremely reliable. But if you're looking to buy a Hasselblad, a 500 series camera, you could be buying anything up to 50, 55 years old. So you do have to know what to look out for. You do need to know where their weaknesses are so you can identify them if there are any issues. So what I'm going to do here is just run through the four main things to check for when you're looking at a 500 series camera. Now, there are quite a few models within the 500 series range. It started within the, with the 500C, then went to the 50, uh, 500CM, all the way through to the 501CM, which was the last of the last of the 500 series cameras before they were discontinued as the big digital revolution hit. But most of most of the checks I'm going to run through here do apply to most cameras. So. Here I have a 501C, which would date back from to the 19, 1990s. Um, fundamentally, design is the same as all the other cameras. There are four things you, you really need to focus on. Focus on the cosmetics, focus on the mechanics, focus on the optics and the electronics. Um, obviously, the electronics, not a big issue with most of these cameras because they are fundamentally mechanical. But start, start, start with the cosmetics. Let, let's look at the cosmetics now. So just. And just look around the camera, just look at the bottom corners, look at the top, the top corners here, look at the bottom of the back, the top of the back, look at the, look at the filter rim, just to make sure there are no nasty signs of, of abuse. Um, they are quite, they're quite weighty cameras, so it doesn't take much to, just to ding them or to dent them, but really you want something that is fairly clean. A few little marks here and there, not an issue at all, but just nothing that's been completely, completely destroyed. Put the dark slide in, take the back off and just, just check to make sure there isn't excessive wear here. Again, a few marks, don't worry too much. Just make sure that there are no dings on the corners here on the back where it might have been knocked or dropped. Wind the camera on with the dark slide in and just take the lens off. Again, just, just check to see the amount of wear, wear here. Hopefully there might be a little, but not, 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 not too much. So once, once you've satisfied yourself that it hasn't been completely abused by pre previous owners move on to the uh, move on to the mechanics now this is a mechanical camera so this is the most the mo really the most the most important thing the first thing i would always check would be the the lens the shutter mechanism and the aperture mechanism are all, and the focus mechanism are, are all within the lens so that is that is most of the moving parts so if, if anything is going to fail it's going to going to be the lens um, and particularly the slow speeds because the slow speeds don't get used that often with these cameras. So wind the camera on and just, just, just fire it. Fire it on a, set it on a second, fire it on a second. And just make sure, fire it two or three times, and just make sure that the, the speed is consistent each time. It, it'll click as it opens, it'll click it as, as it closes, a nice whir in between. And then go on to half a second. Again, just repeat it two or three times. What you're checking here is that there's no stuttering, the shutter's not sticking open, and the shutter isn't closing prematurely um, before it should. So, for example, on if we set it on a second, it goes click click. That clearly is not a second. I mean, you can't ever tell it's exactly a second. But by firing it two or three times, you're, you're just listening out to, to make sure that the, the, the shutter is consistent each time. What you will find is sometimes it'll be a lot faster, sometimes it'll be a lot slower. That's a sign it needs servicing. Um, Take the camera up to 500th of a second. Just take the back off the camera, and you can look through. You can look through the lens as you fire the shutter, and just make sure you just see a quick flick of light as the shutter opens. Often, if the shutter is badly serviced, then it won't open on a 500th or 250th. And as you fire it and you look through, you won't see any light at all. So you're not timing a 500th of a second. You're just making sure the shutter is opening. If you can. Um, if you can do that and it passes those checks, then you can be fairly confident that the lens is in good, in, in, in good order. One quick thing you could do is just plug a flash into the little sink socket there and just make sure the flash sink works. That little socket often gets a bit mucky uh, and often the, the, that can impact the flash synchronization. Um, at this point, I'll just move on to, onto the camera body and just, just have a look inside. Maybe take the lens back, the back off as well. Just fire the camera, make sure the 
mirrors going up as it should and clearing the film gate going right up to the top. Look at the back, just make sure the two the two blinds, the two the two blinds there are opening and closing. Often what can happen on Hasselblads that need servicing are these blinds here only sort of go up partially. And if they're only moving up partially, again, camera needs a service. Also fire the um the pre-release just here. They can sometimes stick on a Hasselblad. Moving on to the back, um, take the dark slide out, make sure it's clean in there. Just remove the, remove the inserts. And one thing you should do is just make sure that number there matches the last three digits there. These, these inserts are built with specific um, backs. So those, those numbers need to match. Um, because they would have been adjusted to work together. If they don't match, it could be an issue. I've come across plenty of backs that don't match and still work perfectly, but ideally you do, you do, you do, want, you do want these things to match. Um, so check that, just check, check once you've fired a few uh, shots on the camera, just make sure that the frame counter is, um, is resetting, that's quite important too. Um, but on the back, really, there's not much. There's not much to check. Um, so frame counter. Make sure the numbers match. Do have a look around here, just on the in, just, just around the inside of the, the the film gate itself. Make sure you can't see any little bits of rope or any bits of cord. There's there's film there's um, light baffling around there, and if if the light baffling begins to break up, you can see little sort of um, little sort of bits of ragged bits of cord, just as the dark slide. Put, as it pushes in, pulls the, the light buffing across the film gate. That again is a sign it needs servicing. So you've looked at the camera, you've looked at the lens, you've looked at the back, and they all seem to be operating okay. Now that's good news. Um, what a lot of people will do is put a, put a test film through, which is a fantastic idea. I mean, if you can put a couple of films through, brilliant. But what I would say is that do, do check it thoroughly and go through this list that I'm highlighting now as well as the film, because there are some things that the film won't pick up on. Um, one weakness these cameras do have um, is overlapping frames. So you can put a film, let's shoot a film through, and that will show if the uh, frames are overlapping. From fr you do get slight irregularity sometimes between the frames, that's perfectly normal. What you don't want is each frame to get too close. Okay, so you've looked at the condition, you've looked at the mechanics. Next is the optics. Now really, on this camera, it really is just the lens. I mean, have a quick look at the mirror, make sure there's no marking on the mirror, on, on the um, any fungus or any scratching on the mirror. On really old Hasselblad, you do often see a few little scratches on the mirror. That's not really so much of an issue. Also check the focusing screen, make sure that's clean. Um, but you really should focus on the lens itself. Just, just hold the lens up to a bright light or, or shine a mobile uh, phone torch through the lens and that'll highlight any any misting or any fungus or any scratches. Um, scratches on the front and the rear elements, not too much of an issue with an old lens. Um, ideally you want it completely clean, but a few scratches don't make that much difference, but they do impact the value. Um, what you really need to avoid is fungus. Now fungus will show itself as, as either misting inside, it'll be, be, like, be, like looking, be like driving a car in fog. If you shine a light through, you'll see the light focusing on the fungus inside as a sort of mist. Sometimes it's a sort of spidery, web-like um, growth inside, so little spots with spidery legs coming out, that's fungus. All of those things are real problems. If you see that, just walk away. And I would say that whatever you're buying, if you ever see fungus inside optics, just, just walk away. It's, it's incredibly expensive to get fixed, and fungus can move from item to item. So if you're putting something with fungus in your camera bag, it can affect the other items as well. So it really is best avoided. So you've checked the optics, you've got to check, check there. Um, you've checked the mechanics, check there. You've checked the um, cosmetics, that's pass two. The final thing is the, the, ele the electronics. Now really, on this particular model, there are no electronics, nothing to check. On some of the latest Hasselblads, the 503CX, 503CXI, some of those 500 series cameras do have TTL flash. So you, you could just, just, just plug that in and just make sure the flash is firing as it should be. But once you've gone through those checks, if you're satisfied that the camera's passed all those, all, the, all those four points, then you can be fairly confident you're gonna have a good, reliable, serviceable camera. So just in summary, four things, check the cosmetics, check the mechanics, check the optics, 
check the electronics. And if all those points have, have passed, then yeah, you, know, you can be confident you've got a good film, uh, a good camera. As I say, a film is a good idea if you can. Um, that, that's just a good double check to just make sure the shutter is open and everything else. So I hope you found that useful. If you have, please just drop a comment um, in the box below. Otherwise, I, I look forward to seeing you, seeing you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.